What's up y'all? I'm Tom and this is Like a Math Class. In this video we're going to talk about the seven primary rules that you need to know for exponents to get you through most problems that you will encounter. Let's get to it. What you see over on the left of your screen here are five of the seven uh, primary rules that you need to know for exponents. But before we get into the rules of exponents, let's get a couple definitions straight. So you notice that I have a and some exponent for a lot of this stuff. This thing here, this is called the base. This number is being taken to this power. So this thing we call the base. And this thing here, this is sometimes called the power. Sometimes it's called the index, depending on what part of the world you come from, or it's called the exponent. I'll use each of these different words uh, throughout this because they all mean the same thing. So, you know, the different words just kind of fly out of my mouth sometimes. All right, so let's get to it. Here we've got a to the m power times a to the n power is equal to a to the m plus n. Now, uh, let's take a look at what this actually looks like as an example to see why this is one of our rules. Let's say we've got a squared times a cubed. This would break down, if we expanded this out, this would say a times a times a times a times a. And if we had all of these things multiplied together, we've got five factors of a or five a's multiplied by themselves. So we have a to the fifth power. And we can see right here that this is two plus three. That's, so that's why this addition rule works. Similarly, when we look at this rule here, we've got a to the m power and a to the n power and they're divided then we subtract these two things. So again, let's say we've got um, x to the fifth power over x squared. If I were to expand that out, I'm gonna have x times x times x times x times x all over x times x. And if I were to simplify these or what we do sometimes say is we cancel those things, we end up with x cubed. And now if you notice, again, this x cubed, another way that we could write this is 5 minus 2. So uh, here we have the numerator exponent being subtracted by the denominator exponent. Now, one of the things that you might notice, this thing here is not in a fraction. So when we subtract these things, we kind of take it out of the fraction to subtract the exponents, and then if it has to go into the denominator, it will go back into the denominator. But really, we kind of consider it outside of the fraction. So that's why over here you even see it not in a fraction form. This next one, we call, I call this the power of a power, because we've got a power and a power here. And if we've got the power of a power, then we're gonna multiply those two things together. So let's say we have a squared to, uh, to the cubed power. So here we have a squared times a squared times a squared. Well, if you notice up here, we said if we're multiplying these two things together, we add the exponents. So here we're multiplying three bases together. So we're gonna add these exponents. So two plus two plus two is a to the sixth. So this is the same thing as saying two times three. So uh, two times three gives us to the sixth power there. The next one kind of diverges a little bit from what we've been looking at. All of these first three have the same base. Now we've got two different bases to the same power. Notice these two things are multiplied together though. So if we look at this one, let's say we've got uh, 2x and we're going to cube that. So 2 and x are two different bases and they're being uh, cubed. So that would be 2x times 2x times 2x. Remember that if we've got 2x, that's 2 times x. So we really have, if I want to be overly explicit here, we've got 2 times x times 2 times x times 2 times x. And if you're multiplying a bunch of the same stuff together, you can rearrange that. So we have 2 times 2 times 2 times x times x times x, which gives us 2 cubed x cubed. Now, 
Typically, we would multiply this out to get eight, but we can see that these two things are being multiplied together. I'll even put that little multiplication dot in there. Uh, these two things are being multiplied together just like we have here. We've got the two different bases being multiplied or to the same power. Now, here's the trick. What happens is sometimes people get this confused with something that looks like this, a plus b to the m power, and they say, oh, that's gonna be a to the m plus b to the m. But that is not the case. Those two things are not equal. If you haven't done quadratics yet, then you'll understand why this does not work in a future lesson. If you have done quadratics, you should know better. Hmm. So don't make this mistake. This only works with multiplication. And as we can see down here, it also works with division. So if we have uh, uh, two over x, we'll do the same, we'll do the same idea. Two over x cubed, that means we're gonna have two over x times two over x times two over x. We know that when we're multiplying all of, uh, when we're multiplying fractions together, we multiply the numerators and we multiply the denominators. So that would end up with two times two times two, which is two cubed over x times x times x, which is x cubed. Uh, so again, we can see that we've got the different bases with the same exponent, the different bases with the same exponent. Now this last, these last two rules that I'm gonna show you, these two, um, one of them, this first one is, is gonna be kind of intuitive for you. You might already know that, maybe you don't. But we're gonna look, I'm gonna look at this kind of kid together in one example. And for my example, I'm gonna use 10 to a power. So we know that 10 to the first power is 10. We know that 10 squared is 10 times 10, which is 100. And we know that 10 cubed is 10 times 10 times 10, which is 1,000. So as we go up in exponents, we know that we're multiplying by another power or another factor of 10. What happens if we go down the list though? So if we go from here to here, we are dividing by 10. As we, uh, as we go from 100 to 10, we are dividing by 10, right? 100 divided by 10 is 10. So as we follow our progression here, 10 to the zero power then, that would be 10 divided by 10. Well, what's 10 divided by 10? That's gonna be one. So here is our next rule right here that we say that anything, anything to the zero power is always gonna equal one. Because no matter what, if we're dividing those two things uh, the same base by itself, that's always gonna be one, right? So that's gonna be what happens here. Now, let's continue this progression a little bit further. So here we see we're going three, two, one, zero. The next logical progression would be 10 to the negative one power. So if we take this, if we take one and we again divide by 10, one divided by 10 is one tenth. And when we have no exponent here, that usually means that we've got an unstated exponent of one. So here we notice that when we've got 10 to the negative one power, what it actually happens is we've got one over 10 to that positive power. So that's what's happening over here. We've got a to some negative power, which just means that it comes down here to the denominator. Now, another example of something similar to this is what happens if we have one over a to the negative n power. Well, the idea is very similar. That that would mean we have one over a to the negative n. Let's see why. what would happen with this. That would mean we're gonna have one over, one over a to the n. Well, if we are doing a fraction like this, if we're dividing one by this fraction, that is going to become a to the n over one, right? So what happens is this thing then goes up into the numerator. So we've got another example here where a to the negative n power, that's just going up into the numerator. So now we're gonna have a positive n there. Now, what happens is sometimes people think about this and they say, ah, oh, well, it's just the reciprocal. So I'm just flipping 
the numerator and the denominator because if it's a to the negative n power and it's over one, right? So they're just gonna swap, they're just switching places. But that's not exactly the case. So let's look at one more example before we wrap up this video. Let's say we've got two to the negative one power over three. Well, if we follow these same rules, then this thing right here, this two to the negative one power, that's gonna come down here. So that's gonna come down to this denominator. So we're gonna have one over two times three, which is ultimately one sixth. So the thing that you have to remember with any exponents, it's always going with what's right next to the exponent, what's connected to the exponent. So let's look here. So here, the parentheses is being, uh, is connected to the, the exponent. So it's kind of getting distributed inside there. Same here. Um, here, this N is connected to the, the parentheses here. The M is connected to the A. So all of these things, this thing is just connected to the A. So when we look at these powers, we have to remember that the base, the exponent is always to the power of whatever it's connected to. So if it's connected to a parentheses, then that whole parentheses is going to whatever the exponent is. If it's just a base to an exponent, then just that base is going to whatever that power is or whatever that exponent is. So you have to be careful that you're just connecting them uh, appropriately, that you don't overly distribute or that you distribute them incorrectly. That's it for this video. If this was helpful, make sure you give me a thumbs up and I will see you in the next video.